Hello, good morning. My name is Jason Xu. I'm the senior research fellow at Harvard Kennedy School. Formerly, I served as a legislator at large uh, in Taiwan's legislative yuan, where I focus in technology, foreign affairs, and defense. I regret that I couldn't be there with you today. I am currently in Taipei, but I do hope today's conference is a great success. Um, I want to spend the next five minutes to share my thoughts on semiconductor geopolitics and Taiwan. I prepare a, a paper to present. Here we go. Semiconductor has been the centerpiece of US and China great power competition and the focal point of geopolitical conflict. Taiwan plays a in irreplaceable role in semiconductor supply chain, producing more than 60% of world's semiconductor chips. A single firm, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, TSMC, churns out more than 90% of the highest end chips that are used for advanced network devices, artificial intelligence, and operating software for precision weapons. Perceived as a silicon shield, Semiconductor served as a protection insurance for Taiwan for Chinese invasion to Taiwan. However, the concentration of chips production also posed geopolitical risks. In October 2022, the Biden administration released export control measures aiming to strangle China's access to production equipment used for high-end semiconductor microchips, which can be used to operate high-performance computing system and advanced weaponry. Under the new rules, companies can no longer supply advanced computing chips, chip making equipment, and related products to China without special licenses. Any firm can apply, but the administration has warned that most will be denied. The new rules also bar professionals with U.S. citizenships from working in Chinese chip makers. As tension rises in the Taiwan Strait, Semiconductor are the Taiwan's surest geopolitical insurance policy. China is dependent on Chinese. Uh, Ch China is dependent on Taiwanese chips to build high-tech products, and has no realistic path to breaking that dependence by any time soon. Beijing has invested massively to build a domestic chip supply chain, but these efforts have not yet yielded the fruit. Its entire high-tech manufacturing sector remained almost totally dependent on Taiwan. In 2014, Chinese government established a National Integrated Circuit Investment Fund, which raised over 18.5 billion US dollars from state-owned enterprises and banks. In addition, Chinese government introduces industrial policies, including tax benefits, subsidized land and utility matching funds, and facilitation of fundraising through IPOs in China, with which to entice more firms to build fabs in China. With the U.S. Congress passing the CHIPS Act in August 2022, providing $52 billion in subsidy and grants, the United States government is poised to lure chip manufacturers such as TSMC to build fabs on the U.S. soil. TSMC announced plans to invest $40 billion to build a second fabricating plant in Arizona, where it will make three nanometer chips. The company's decision to cite more production globally, including the United States, Tokyo, uh, Europe, and Japan, is understandable given the tensions over Taiwan have taken the second have, have taken the center stage. However, TSMC also runs into a series of challenges with the Arizona project, such as regulatory compliance, talent shortage, and shortage of water and the cost effectiveness. On the geopolitical front, Taiwan proves to be a trigger point as Biden and Xi Jinping threats the choppy water of the US-China relationships. Beijing never denounces its ambition to take over Taiwan by force if necessary. Following U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to the island last August, China conducted unprecedentedly aggressive military exercises, launching missiles near the island and simulating a blockade in the Taiwan Strait. 
Dr. Morris Zhang, TSMC's founder, has made clear that if a war breaks out, there's no way China can seize TSMC's fabs by force. They will either be destroyed or rendered inoperable. While TSMC has received one-year exemption from the new U.S. Expo control, there could come a time when the U.S. the U.S. government will push it to cut off most of its business in China. Given both U.S. and China are headed into presidential election cycle in 2024, microchips have become a trigger point on which U.S. and China must carefully manage it. So with the paper I present, I wanted to uh, ask uh, three important uh, questions. And um, number one is, could the U.S. industrial policy successful, successfully duplicate the semiconductor ecosystem that Taiwan um, took uh, 40 years to build? And with today's ever integrated global supply chain and vertical integration, will U.S. alone be able to um, copy the model and make it as cost-effective as it produced elsewhere. The second question I want to ask is, um, two days ago, Dr. Morris Zhang said in a public event here in Taipei, US's efforts in bringing chip manufacturing to the United States will eventually drive up the cost of the chips and slow down the um, distribution of technology. This is a very interesting point because today's chips are everywhere and almost ubiquitous because it is produced at a relatively low and competitive price. So if US insists on entirely onshoring the um, chips manufacturing, would then the access to the chips be um, less available and also would the distribution of the um, affordable chips um, be more and more difficult. And the third, would U.S.'s policies such as ESPO control and sanctions um, uh, runs into the geopolitical conflict of interest, especially when other allies such as uh, Korea and Japan also have uh, business uh, in China? Uh, Dr. Morris Zhang, also in the, in the same event in Taipei, uh, openly uh, supported uh, U.S.'s policies to slow, slow down China's uh, ambition and development in the semiconductor industry. So the way I see it is um, there's, no, there's a, a point of no return. So the industry must uh, reorganize itself with this type of a great divide, or I should say great uh, pivot, away from, from China. Um, and again, on the centerpiece is the uh, uh, Taiwan and also the cross-trade uh, tension uh, leading up to the 2024 uh, presidential election cycles. With that, I will close my uh, presentation today. And again, I couldn't be uh, with you today and I uh, really love for your feedback and my fellow uh, panelists' uh, advice and feedback as well. Uh, I can be contacted uh, at this email on the, on the screen. Uh, I wish you all a great uh, conference and exchange of uh, wonderful and uh, stimulating ideas. Thank you very much.